In this movie, we'll talk about the new features in the April 2017.1 version of Premiere Pro. This is version 11. Again, this is sort of a one-stop shop for people already familiar with Premiere Pro who just want a rundown of some of the major new features contained within the scope of this essential training. If you're brand new to Premiere, this movie will probably be a little too overwhelming because we'll be breezing through information out of context. So for beginners, skip this and go straight to chapter two. But for those of you who want to watch the What's New content, let's get on with it. There are no exercise files for What's New content, so please just sit back and watch. All right, so first of all, there is a new welcome screen. Now this is the start screen, but if you are running a trial version of the software, or if this is the very first time you're launching it, you'll be brought to the welcome screen. You can access that anytime by coming up to help and then welcome screen. All right, so this is the welcome screen and it offers new users some nice resources to get started. Here under explore, if I was to click on this, it sets up an entire project called Going Home. Okay, so I have my assets over here in my project panel and a sequence loaded for me. All right, so this is really nice for new users. You have some high quality assets to get started on your editing journey. And then if you go back up to your welcome screen, the watch tile gives you some tutorials in order to use the Going Home footage. All right, and then finally you have the Get Started tile. So if you select this, you're able to use your own assets. So if I wanted to go into some of my B-roll and get some of my footage here, and then just click and then command click or control click on a PC, like so. And then I'm just going to name this. I'll call it Topa Topa Test. Topa Topa is the name of the brewery that we are making a video about in this course. And I'll say import. So this is very much like that Explore Going Home project, but instead you use your own assets. So here are the clips I brought in and it automatically makes a sequence out of them in the order that you selected. All right, so again, this might be a nice way for some editors to get started on their editing journey to really quickly start a project and make a sequence. But I actually tend to think that maybe starting a little bit more slowly, like we do in the context of this training, might make a little bit more sense for people. But this is there if you need it. All right, I'm gonna close this and then come back to my start screen. And so we'll skip this. And then I'm gonna go into my main Topa Topa project where I have a sequence that I'm gonna demonstrate a few more what's new concepts. All right, so next up, certainly the most major news of this release is a brand new titling program called the Graphics Titler. Let me load the what's new sequence here. And before I show you the graphics titler, I will just mention that if you do want to create a title on what they're now calling the legacy titler, you can go up to file, new, and then legacy title, and that'll open up the old title tool. But let's take a look at the new one. You can see there's this new graphics menu, and this is where you make your selections in order to add graphics to your timeline. So if I just park where I want to add my first title and have the timeline selected, that's important, and I come up to graphics, I can choose new layer and I can choose any of these elements in order to get started. Notice that the text layer has a command shortcut of command T or control T on a PC. So you could also just park in your timeline and press command T. All right, so right now we have a new text layer, okay? And it comes in by default as just a white horizontal text layer that is ready for editing. So I'm gonna go to my effect controls panel and you may think that you double click in here in order to edit it. Well, you don't, you actually switch to the type tool and the type tool is down here, keyboard shortcut T. All right, so you're gonna be going back and forth between your T and your V a lot when you're working with titles. So I press T and then you can select this and I'll just select everything and his name is Jack, okay? And then now I can come over and select my selection tool and I can move this around and I'm gonna show you a few things that you can do within the effect controls panel, but we go into this in a lot more detail in the titling chapter in this course, all right? So I'll just give you a few basics for now. I'm gonna skip the motion parameters right now, and I'm gonna move on to the integrated text editing tools. So here I have one text element, this Jack, and then I have basic text editing capabilities up at the top, and then I have transform properties for this text element right below that. So let's just make a few changes here. I'm gonna change my text to Arial, 
And then I'll press tilde so that we can actually see this. And I'll increase the tracking a little bit. Here is where I would change the fill color. Okay, if I wanted to change that, I definitely could. I can also add a stroke or an outline and then change the value on that. And of course, change the color on that as well. And then I can also add a drop shadow. Once you select shadow, you also have shadow editing capabilities down here. All right, I'm gonna turn off shadow and stroke and let's bring that back to white for now. And then I wanna show you how you add additional elements to this graphic, okay? So right now I have this graphic selected. And so any other elements that I add are gonna be added within this graphic. Before I do that, let me show you what happens if you don't have the graphic selected. So I'll just deselect it. And so now I'm just parked in the timeline and let me just make sure we can see V4 here. And I can come up to graphics and new layer and say I want to put Jack's title underneath it. And I wanted to add another text layer. Well, if I do it without this graphic selected, you can see that it adds a new title graphic, okay? And then this is where I could, you know, edit this further and then I could have two titles existing on top of one another like so, all right? And you know, sometimes this is desirable. You have the option of having these totally separate elements within the timeline. And as you can see, when I have one selected, here's my text element here. And when I have another selected, here's my text element here. If you want them to be more integrated though, you don't wanna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And instead I'm going to select Jack and then come up to graphics, new layer, and let's do text. All right. So here you can see that they're both included within the same title. So let's go ahead and edit this just very basically. Again, I'll press T and he's the co-founder. And I'm gonna select my text and then come in and scale it down. Okay. And then I can come down to my transform properties if I want and reposition, rescale. And these have on-screen commands too, all right? So if I have my text selected, I'm just gonna press V to get back to my selection tool. Let me press tilde so we can see this better. If I wanna rescale on screen, I just drag one of my control points here. If I wanna rotate, I just hover on one of the corners and I can rotate like so. All right, so any of those transform properties can be replicated on screen. Press tilde again. And uh, the one last thing I wanna show you about the effect controls panel is that everything can be keyframed so you can dial in and really make some nice, complex animations if you like. And then you can do this per text layer or you can come up to your motion effects and do it on the entire title at the same time. So if I come to scale, notice that both text elements are scaling together and they're both moving together and they're both rotating together. I'll reset that and I can also add keyframes. So if I wanted this to come in from the left, just add position keyframes like so and then move that off screen and everything's coming on together. Craftsmanship. All right, so you can do this yourself or you can use one of the integrated templates. So let me show you that. If I go to window and then essential graphics, this is a new panel. And if I click on edit, you can see my separate text elements. So here's co-founder and everything I can edit for that text element. And here's Jack and everything I can edit for that text element. All right, so it's not the same accordion structure as we have within the effect controls panel where you have everything kind of lined up on top of one another. Rather, we have to make these selections. And there is also the browse tab. And so this is where you can use those templates. So if I go into lower thirds, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping what you wanna use. So I'll do bold lower third left and bring that on V4. Okay, and I'll turn off V3 so that we don't have competing titles. All right, so if I select this and go to edit, you see we have two text elements. We have name and we have these lines. So I'll just move these lines into view here. And then if I click on name and then I'll press T and we'll change this to Jack and then this to co-founder. All right, I can use my motion effects to edit that as well. I'm just gonna scale up and reposition a bit here. All right, and I can select my program monitor and press tilde. I think there is an animation at the beginning of this. Craftsmanship, quality. 
All right, so lots of new exciting stuff with this new graphics titler. Check out the graphics chapter for more. Now there's just one more thing that I wanna show you as part of what's new content, and that has to do with transcoding via the media browser. So in the media browser, we have the ability to check ingest if we want the media that we bring in to be copied or transcoded or if we need to create proxies, okay? And the change here is that when I'm transcoding, I can actually now use in and out points, which is pretty great. So if I go to interviews and bring in maybe one of Jack's interviews here, I'll go to my thumbnail view, and I'm just gonna bring in a very tiny portion. I'm gonna set an in. Topa Topa as a conduit to talk about something bigger. And an out. And then now I'm gonna click ingest, and then I'm gonna go to my ingest settings and then I'm going to change it to transcode. And when I transcode, it's only gonna bring in the portion between my in and out point, all right? This is new. So I'm gonna say, okay, and then we'll go ahead and import this, right click and import. And then I'll go back to my project panel. And so here it is, this is what I brought in. And if I load this, I'll double click. You can see that we only have the two seconds and 15 frames that we brought in. Topa Topa as a conduit to talk about something bigger. Okay, so if transcoding is a part of your workflow, this is fairly major, so you don't have to bring in entire clips. You really can zero in on exactly only what you need. All right, so those are the what's new topics that I wanted to cover for this essential training. There are quite a few other changes in this version of the software that go beyond the essential training. So for those, please check out the Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud Updates course.